Hi everyone, this is Peter here. Welcome back. This is the second episode of my garden macros taken with the Nisi 58mm close-up lens on the Canon 100mm macro. If you want to know why I enjoy this setup so much, then you should check out the first episode as well. I captured some really cool subjects this time as well and I will briefly talk about each species. So let's get those images rolling. All right, let's start with this well camouflage caterpillar that I found on the wooden fence in our backyard. This first image contains three individual images for increased depth of field and the second one which was taken at the maximum magnification ratio was stitched together from six shots. This species is the caterpillar of a tiger moth and was first described in the early 19th century. The function of the special coloration and markings is to warn and repel predators. This is called aposematism. Besides the coloration you can also see those long urticating hairs which can cause severe irritation if they manage to pierce your skin so be aware. Another a really interesting fact is that many tiger moth species retain poisonous chemicals that they acquire from host plants. These might include alkaloids, pyrazines and histamines. Larvae usually acquire these chemicals and may retain them in the adult stage, but adults can acquire them too by regurgitating decomposing plants containing the compounds and sucking up the fluid. Our second subject is a very small garden jumping spider that I found in our backyard. These spiders, as I mentioned in our first episode, can be quite inquisitive and some of them like to just stare straight into the camera and quite often end up jumping onto the lens and it can take some time to coax them off. Here you can see the drag line that they leave behind as a safety to anchor themselves before leaping away. This one ended up jumping onto my hand eventually and I managed to grab one image of it as it was sitting on my fingertip partially hiding. I really love this very last image where you can see all the individual little hairs around the eyes and the tiny eyelashes at the top. The next couple of shots are of another garden jumping spider, not sure of the exact species. The coloration of this one was a little more vibrant, the legs were a bit longer as well. The second shot from the side showed more of its lush habitat which I really liked. Our very last jumping spider species in this video is gonna be this beautiful female white banded house jumping spider that I found on the brick wall in our backyard. I've seen and captured many of them at this spot before so wasn't surprised to see one at this time of the year. This species is endemic to Australia but can also be found in New Zealand. I've got a pretty funny video of a male dancing around so feel free to check that video out. I'll provide the link in the description. This specimen was quite small, no longer than a centimeter and I'm Unfortunately, she ended up falling prey to a grey house spider that was lurking around when she decided to jump straight into its sticky web. If you watch closely, these next two shots show two of her dismembered legs as she was trying to escape but never stood a chance. In the very last image, you can spot the venom dripping at the tip of her fangs as well while she was trying to fight off the much larger house spider to no avail. This next species is a blue blowfly or blue butterfly which I found on the Spiss cheese plant as well. This species is approximately 1 cm in length and has bright orange cheeks. These flies are important in the field of forensic entomology and they use them to estimate the time of a person's death when a corpse is found and then examined. The blue butterflies are also adapted to cooler temperatures and their flight activity threshold is around 13 to 16 degrees Celsius, much lower than of other blowflies. When you try to capture your subjects, then usually try to avoid shooting in direct sunlight, especially when the subject has a reflective iridescent body, as the specular highlights can look quite unpleasing, just like in this image. I was really happy how sharp these pictures turned out, the level of detail was exceptional at 2x magnification. Our second last subject is a tiny predatory mite called Burligig mite. I found it running around on our fence and they can be quite hard to capture as they rarely stand still. I have some really detailed 4K footage of one printing itself. Feel free to check that out as well. It looked quite fascinating. These mites feed on small insects and other mites and are used as a biological pest control agent in agriculture. If you look closely, you can see tiny hairs covering its legs and almost the entire body, which looked really cool. Our last couple of macros show a wood net and I was really stoked as I had never captured this species before. The first image was taken at a lower magnification while the second one which is a stacked image consisting of three individual frames was shot at a magnification ratio of approximately 2 to 1. Some species of wood nets feed on decaying organic matter so they are saprophagous while others are fungivorous feeding on fungi. This species is medium sized brown to orange in color and has long thin legs. The large companda 
guys in this particular species are dichoptic, which means they are located separately and symmetrically on each side of the head, and each of them view a separate and independent field. I should wrap this up now. I hope you enjoyed learning about the subjects and the story behind the shots. If you're new to my channel and you like the world of macro, and I've got heaps of content for you. So just have a look at all the different playlists dedicated for macro photography, extreme macro, and plenty of reviews as well. Anyway, thanks again for watching and see you all very soon in the next one.